Hello everyone, welcome to Broadview. My name is Joseph. Jurassic World 3 came out not too long ago. I wonder if you've seen it. Max Haddock, another co-founder of Elon Musk's company Neuralink, tweeted, If we want to do it, the Jurassic Park should be created within 15 years using genetic engineering and incubation. This was after we had admired the film's great CGI cinematics. This comment sparked controversy right away. A lot of people don't think it's possible, but there's also a growing voice of support people who do believe it can be done. I mean, Elon Musk demonstrated that he can teach monkeys to use their minds to play video games on computers. Well, today we'll look at what people have done and what they have been able to do so far in their quest to revive dinosaur species. Before we start, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell. It helps us reach more people. In 2003, paleontologists in a desert area of northeastern Montana, USA, were moving a fossil of a Tyrannosaurus rex that had just been found. Because of how bumpy the trip in a helicopter can be, the 0.9 meter long thigh bone suddenly broke during the ride. Surprisingly, this break led to a major scientific discovery in the future. At that time, Jack Horner was in charge of the excavation project. He's a well-known paleontologist and dinosaur madman who has found and dug up many dinosaur fossils. He also served as a technical consultant in the Jurassic Park series of movies, and he was the inspiration for the lead character in films one and three, Dr. Alan Grant, who is also the dinosaur digging paleontologist. When the thigh bone of the Tyrannosaurus Rex fractured, Horner promptly collected the pieces and delivered them to his graduate student, Mary Schwartwitzer. This accident led to an astounding finding. Mary was dissatisfied with the pieces because her original series of experiments had been unsuccessful. She also didn't obtain a traditional paleontology education and didn't major in this field in college. Because of this, she doesn't follow standard experimental protocols when examining dinosaur specimens. Mary put a piece of petrified Tyrannosaurus rex bone that she didn't think was useful for research into a weak acid solution. She thought the bone would break down completely, but something strange happened instead. After soaking it for a long time, the bone completely dissolved, leaving a resilient material behind. It's not very often that fossilized bones tens of millions of years old can retain something like this. Mary looked at the area with a powerful microscope and saw some round things that looked a lot like red blood cells with blood vessels all over them. This is an incredible find. What Mary saw in front of her shocked her. Could it be a piece of a Tyrannosaurus Rex blood? If it really is the blood tissue of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, it is the oldest blood in the world and it is likely to contain T-Rex DNA. Theoretically, with this DNA, people could figure out the genetic code and make a clone of it, a living Tyrannosaurus Rex. Could it be possible for the scene in Jurassic Park to really become true? Mary immediately put together a team of researchers to try to get DNA from the dinosaur specimen. Unfortunately, they were unable to do so because even though the soft tissue of these Tyrannosaurus rex dinosaurs had elastic blood vessels and bone cells, even in a sterile condition, DNA can only survive for a million years or so. This Tyrannosaurus rex died about 68 million years ago, so its DNA had already decomposed. Mary, on the other hand, found something that no one had ever seen before. She was amazed to find medullary tissue on one of these bone slices that were 68 million years old. This medullary tissue is very unique. Only the female birds have it. What's it used for? Well, when a female bird is getting ready to lay an egg, the medullary tissue is turned into calcium, which is used to produce the eggshell. This is interesting. The medullary tissue birds used to lay eggs was found in the bones of a Tyrannosaurus rex. This means that the Tyrannosaurus rex in front of her was not only pregnant at that time, but more importantly, it was likely to have some kind of kinship with birds. Mary sent her friend John Acera a piece of soft tissue from the bone to uncover more of its secrets. Acera works at the Harvard Medical School as a researcher. He looked at the soft tissue of the Tyrannosaurus rex and found that there are seven different kinds of collagen. He read out the order of the amino acids in these proteins, which he then compared to the order of amino acids in 21 modern birds. The results of this comparison are amazing. The animal with the collagen sequence that is most like that of a Tyrannosaurus rex turns out to be a chicken, not a crocodile or a lizard. The bird some of us consume every week turns out to be related to the dinosaur king. In fact, taking into account the available scientific evidence, they are indeed related. As you can see from the picture below, theropod dinosaurs which lived about 200 million years ago and were the first big meat eaters on earth are the ancestors of both Tyrannosaurus rex and chickens. 
But in the middle of the evolution tree, the T-Rex and the chicken went their separate ways. Based on this evolutionary tree, you can't say that chickens are descendants of the T-Rex, but you can say that they are a descendant of a dinosaur. Even though today's chickens don't have the sharp teeth and big claws of their dinosaur ancestors, the lineage of dinosaur ancestors may be found woven in their DNA. So dinosaur fanatic Jack Horner came up with this crazy idea, use the DNA from chickens to bring dinosaurs back to life. If you put the bones of a chicken and a dinosaur side by side, you'll notice that they look quite similar in shape. For instance, they all have three phalanges and the ilium and cervical vertebrae are very similar. But the two are not the same in a few notable ways. Dinosaur tails are long, while the tails of chickens are short. The arms and claws of dinosaurs have evolved into chicken wings. Dinosaurs had very sharp teeth, but chickens don't have any. Instead, they have beaks, which are what most birds have today. Horner thinks that chicken DNA probably still has all the genes that are responsible for traits like dinosaur tails, arms, and teeth. However, after millions of years of evolution, these genes are no longer expressing and have been turned off. If these genes can be turned back on while the embryo is growing, the chick that hatches from the egg might look like a small dinosaur. For this reason, they also made a special tail for the chicken and tied it to the chicken according to the proportion of the tail of a T-Rex. Very interesting, the chicken actually walks and moves just like the dinosaurs in the movie. Horner's hypothesis is pretty out there, but it's not completely out of nowhere. Because in the early stages of a chicken's embryonic development, you can actually see an arm with three fingers. However, in the later stages, these three fingers will join together to form what are now known as wings. Biologists have also seen that chicken embryos with genetic alterations have grown teeth like dinosaurs' saber teeth. Later, scientists from Yale and Harvard also changed the genes of chicken embryos to make them grow two round separate noses, just like those of crocodiles and dinosaurs. At the time, these results shocked scientists, so Horner and his team of researchers started the real experiment of making chicken dinosaurs. They gave chicken embryos a virus with genes that turn on and upregulate the genes that make the chicken's tail and arms grow while turning off the genes that make the chicken's fingers join. By doing these, they expect to produce chick dinosaurs with arms and claws. Although so far we haven't seen a real living chick dinosaur born, but looking at this prototype, some people are already fidgeting. Some scientists criticized Horner saying that even if his project succeeded in the end, all he got was just a nondescript monster chicken that has nothing to do with any sort of dinosaur. Of course, some people don't agree with this, saying that if there is a dinosaur chicken, it opens up the door to so many unknown possibilities. Though it almost has one ponder, should we be interfering in such a way? Some may call it playing God. We have done this in an accelerated rate with plants and other animals artificially modifying them. We are now learning of the disastrous imbalances these biologic products are causing on our ecosystem and biodiversity. Now, add dinosaurs in the mix. Well, it's your turn. What do you think about this? Do you think resurrecting dinosaurs is achievable? Do you think genetic modification can bring benefits or disasters to humans? Leave a comment below, and I'll see you next time.